All right, it's eight fifty-five, and at ten minutes till. I don't like it. You don't like the view? No. Now, if you stay back there, but you're not gonna stay back there. How you know? And I can't see. No, I don't like it. I don't like it. I gotta fix it. I think I'm usually further into this quarter, baby. I think you're usually further in the corner too. But look here. Uh, we start at nine. Yep, we're live. I understand. I understand. But at nine twenty, with ten minutes to go, I need you to remind me. I got gotcha. you. That I'm going to give a secret away. You give him secrets? I hope you're not telling my secrets. Not your secret. Okay. <laughs> I know your secret. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to tell one thing that's going to change somebody's life that they no one has ever told them before uh -oh. about self. Real Something talk. they've never been told before. Some good stuff. Some good stuff that's going to help Some them to sell better. But I need to do it at yeah. 10 minutes till. Gotcha. Something that's going to help them sell better. Never have sold before. My phone is over there. If you don't mind. It's going to be something It's significantly hotter in this room than there's anywhere else in the house. It is now. It usually isn't. This is usually the coldest place. Jesus. I've been in here warming it up. I guess so. And we just had a powerful presentation. Yes, you did. I was there. All right, it's 8.57. <clears throat> We got some guests on. Oh, I don't see their names. Gotta come forward a bit. Oh, I'm so sorry. So yes, can you, can, you can move that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Woo. We got tell. some Mark on. Mark says, teach me. Mark? Yeah, Mark Smith. Teach Hello, me. Hello, Mark. How you doing? We got some uh, wine salespeople on here tonight out of Florida. Uh-oh. Yeah. Florida. <laughs> I almost was ready to go to some Florida. After that little piece of snow we had. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> we had like a breath of a snow, and it was gone by that afternoon. Oh, my gosh. Tonight's going to be good. It's got a lot of... Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten points I want to make. Uh, one, two, three. Can you not come that close to my camera? I might have I'm to. getting nose hairs okay, okay, and okay. everything. Well, let's stay there. So let me figure this out. If, okay. I, if I bring this forward. Take it. Now you're in my frame. Now you're blocking my light. Am I really blocking your light? Go a little bit. No, go no that that way. There you go. You're, that's perfect. Can you see it? It's not in frame. Can you access it? Uh, yeah. Uh. I guess it's the light coming from behind it is turn it, trip. move it where you need it to go, cause I can move this light. These people are ready for you, baby. I'm ready too. Okay. How's that? Yeah, this is better. Okay. Awesome. How, about, how do I look on camera? You look great on camera. I like your vest. Thank you, baby. It's eight fifty-eight. We're gonna start at nine o'clock on the dot. Now, are you able to see my screen? Cause it looks like you're dead on me. You can no, see I can my... see your screen. Oh, yes. I'm not screen though. I'm bored. I know what you meant. I'm gonna be writing tonight. Umbrella lighting. Why you all in my business, Mark Smith? Yes. <laughs> we got umbrellas. This real stuff over here. This is a production studio, That's man. That's right, man. It's a household studio. <laughs> Make sure you remind me it's not rock so much. <laughs> yes, You gotta please. do all that, producer. I know. Don't rock too much, please. I'm gonna try not to. But if I get going, I will stop you. I need you to help me. And that's what this means. That means what? Stand still. Okay. It is now 8.59. 8.59. Oh, you, you didn't have my music ready, did you? I got you, baby. Okay. I'm going to turn my ringer off. <laughs> that would be embarrassing. <laughs> yes, please have your ringer off. He said, roll up your sleeves, about to get it in. Yeah, I should, but these sleeves, this works pretty good, actually. Those sleeves work pretty this good. This is a pretty good fitting shirt. All right. I don't need to roll these up. Normally, at the end of the day, Brother Mark, you're right, we do have to roll, roll up our sleeves. Or if we get into a hot presentation, we'll roll up our sleeves. Yeah. these are pretty good. This yes. shirt gives me full range of motion without rolling up my sleeves. Absolutely. I'm ready. You're ready. You got another 30 seconds. I'm right. getting there, baby. Okay. I promise you, we're working it out. But Mark is over there co-producing. You trying to get a check, Mark? You trying to get a check? You want a check, man? <laughs> I need all the co-producing. is fine. I don't mind at all. There we go. That's my music. Game. There it is. Game in momentum. Game in momentum. All right. Gaining Hello, this is Monday Night Sales Mastery. I do this each week, each Monday night for 30 minutes to give some information that's going to help you to sell yourself 
and your services better than you ever have before. My name is Brian McNeil. I've been helping people to sell better for about 25 years now. I'm the author of five books. Five books. I'm the author of... Woo! Five. Five books. The Shortcut, The Fastest Route to Selling Your Services Better Than You Ever Have Before, an Amazon bestseller. I'm also the author of Asking for the Money, How Anyone Can Close More Sales, Even You. I'm also the author of Why Rhinos Make Great Sales People, featuring Mr. Randall the Rhino. Uh-oh. <laughs> this book right here. It's a children's book that exposes children to the wonderful world of professional selling. You're going to be on uh, Read to My Kids with that one next. I'm going to be on Read to My Kids next yes. week, right? Yeah. Read to My Kids. That's a great uh, online service. An oh, online radio station. That's right. I'm also the author of the workbook for The Shortcut. And I'm also the, I was a contributing author in the book, 17 Legal Ways to uh, Double Your Profits. So anyway, you know a little bit about sales. I know a little bit about sales. Just a little bit. I've got hundreds of testimonials <clears throat> written out to me from clients that have been wonderfully happy about what I'm about to espouse to you. So tonight we're going to talk about how to raise yourself from failure to success in selling. Now, the original title of that book came from this book here. How I Raised Myself from Failure to Success in Selling by Frank Betger. Now, awesome. Frank Betger, this book was originally written, I gotta tell you. Bill Brown is on! Hello, Mr. Brown. Future published author in progress. This book was written originally in 1947. Wow. 1947. And it's still an amazing book on how to sell. Now, my books are way better. Okay, but that book is still good. <laughs> I took some of the premises I learned from Mr. Frank Becker's book, and I Brianized them, and I modernized them, and I'm going to espouse some stuff out to you. All right. But right now, just think with me for a moment. Are your sales, are you happy with how effectively you're selling your services? Sometimes folks get to that place where they're not happy with how they're selling their services, and they find themselves in that mode, that malaise, for a long time. Sometimes they find themselves in that place for months. Sometimes they find themselves in that place for years. Where they just never really, uh, you know, that sad sack salesperson. Mm. They never could really get it going. Never could get a, a hot streak going. Never could get it really cranking. Mm. They just meander. And what happens is if you're not careful, you start thinking that, well, that's just the way it is. I'm not going to be able to rock this business. And that's just not true. I've got 10 points tonight that I want to cover with you. And I'm hopeful that I'll cover them all. And hopefully between now and 930, because we're going to end at 930, everyone on this broadcast will learn something. So you ready? Let's go. Mark says it all starts between your ears. It all starts between your ears. Funny he should say that. Uh -huh. Okay. Because my first point is, First thing you got to do to get yourself out of a sales sum, to get yourself from failure to success in sales, is remind yourself is how great your stuff is. Mm. How great your stuff is. Can you type that in? Sure. How great your stuff is. A lot of times, especially professional sales people who pay attention, a lot of times when they first go through training, they learn all this cool stuff, and then when they get out in the field... They find themselves, and this is a crime, mm. taking shortcuts. And then they stop doing the full presentation. And then what happens is they only talk about their one or two favorite things. They don't talk about everything else. So a lot of times when I get with a, uh, an insurance company or a real estate agency or an individual salesperson, one of the first things I have to do is to remind them of how great their stuff is. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of professionals forget. Here's the little tool, tool I use to remind them. I'm just going to teach it to you here real quick. All right. Uh, one thing you do, I ask you to take out a sheet of paper and number it from 1 to 10, skipping a line between each number. Then I take out my phone, which has a timer on it, and I set my timer for three minutes. Mm. And what I do is, when I say go, I want you to write down 10 great reasons why someone should buy from you and your services. Note how I'm wording that. You and your services because you are a part of your services. A lot selling is a, a, a process, yes, but the most important part of the process is the person, the salesperson. You are a part of your services. So ten great reasons why someone should buy from you 
and your services, and I tell them, don't be afraid to put down the obvious great reasons why someone should buy. The very obvious ones. I say, when I say go, go, and I time them. And it's very important that they finish this within three minutes time. And during those three minutes while they're on the clock doing this, I distract them. I talk to them the whole time. So they have to write down 10 great reasons why someone should buy from them and deal with me all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I'm fully aware that I'm distracting them. I am distracting them on purpose. Give me a second. Yes. Thank you so much for all of your comments. Mark, I love how you're engaging. He said, don't lose your identity. We do want to make sure that we get as many people some access to this particular broadcast. So if you can, go ahead and comment the name of somebody you think might benefit from this or share it on your timeline. And whatever you do, go ahead and click on those likes, those loves, even the hates. We don't even care if you hate <laughs> it because Facebook loves those algorithms. That's so please, right. Those add to the algorithms on Facebook. So thank you for your input. I appreciate it. Anything, anything I need to know about? Or can I keep driving? Keep driving. I'm keep driving. But thank you very much, and thank you, producer. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Tasha shared. Thank you. We appreciate you. I appreciate that very much. All right, so I do that real quick because to remind themselves how great their stuff is. And if you will do that professional, it makes you feel better right away. Just to remind yourself of how great your stuff is. Can you write down 10 great things about you and your services as to why someone should buy within three minutes. I challenge you to challenge yourself and actually do that. That's my first point. I've got nine more points I want to make tonight. <laughs> All right. Now, a lot of times I meet up with a salesperson and they think that they're in a sales slump. Note what I said. They think that they're in a sales slump. They think that no one is buying. They think that the economy is bad. And it takes me three, maybe four questions to determine that that's not the truth. Mm. Very, very often when people think they're in a sales slump or they think they're missing sales is because they have stopped doing the work that's required for them to be successful. They stop doing the actual work. Are you making any sales calls? Are you giving anyone an opportunity to say no to you? Or say yes to you. Mm -hmm. I'm finding out that they're, they think their sales are off, but they go a whole month and give one person a chance to say yes. Mm -hmm. Or a whole month or only two people. And if you sold 100% of them, that's only a chance of making two sales. So number, number two a point I want to make is make sure you're doing the basics of your business. Basic training. Make sure you're give, finding prospects and giving prospects a full presentation and giving them an opportunity to say no to you. Note how I worded that. It doesn't give them a chance to say no. Because a lot of times when you give folks a chance to say no, some of those no's be our yeses. Mm. But you got to at least give them a chance to. Now, doing a full presentation and not saying the words, will you give my services a try? I want you to always say, will you give my services a try? Or will you try my services? Will you give my services a try? I like that way. To me, will you give me a try? It's such a non-threatening way to ask for the business. If they say anything, nothing here ends the sales. If they say yes, great. If they say no, great. It's not over. However they choose to answer that question. Well, will you give my services a try? I want you to start doing that. So, basic stuff first. Make sure that you are doing what you're supposed to do as a bare minimum in your business, which includes finding prospects. Now, we don't have time tonight to go into all of that. Tonight, I'm only going to talk about how to raise yourself from failure to success in selling quickly. Mark said, that's what Zig taught me. That's what Zig taught him. Zig taught everybody, Mark. <clears throat> I'm a disciple of Zig Ziglar myself. I love Zig Ziglar. <clears throat> Just for a moment, let's play a game. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if you... Now, I've met Zig Ziglar. Oh. Zig Ziglar. I met Zig Ziglar twice. I actually had Zig Ziglar autograph my copy of Secrets of Closing the Sale, which is one of Zig Ziglar's book. And he autographed my book, Best Wishes, Zig Ziglar, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Wow. That was his signature. He says he always puts that scripture. 
Because of Zig Zig Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 is uh, not by works lest any man should boast. Okay, it's not just because of how great you are. You have help to be great. That was his scripture. I always autograph my books. Um, uh, you are a champion, um, Brian K. McNeil, and Colossians 3 and 23. And all work we do, do it as if working for the Lord and not for man. For you know there will be reward. If you did everything you do as if you were working directly for God, how much more effectively would you do your work? Mark said Zig was his mentor as well, and he says amen. 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 All right. So that's my second point. We got a co-host tonight. I appreciate it, Brother Mark. <laughs> that's uh, my second good. point. Ensure that you are doing the basics for your business before you proclaim, proclaim out of your mouth that you're in a sales slump. Mm. Okay? Now, this is going to be funny here. The next thing is, I'm going to teach you, have you ever heard the word enthusiasm? Mm -hmm. Enthusiasm. This is a word that came about to describe people who performed better during Olympic competition than they normally did. The word was invented to describe people who performed better during Olympic competition than they normally did. And it comes from two words. It comes from the words N plus Theos. Theos. N plus Theos hmm. literally means as if enabled by the gods. Mm -hmm. So when you perform enthusiastically, you are performing as if the gods themselves are helping you. So what I'm saying to you is, if you're not selling well. Mark said spell it with capital letters. Mark, that's as good as it gets, bruh. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> I try to retype everything in the chat for him. But, um, and plus, you know, that's what I got, man. We're gonna move on because we only got 30 minutes to do all this. Play. All right, and plus, Theos. I mean, I'm gonna suggest to you my point number three tonight is I want you to act more enthusiastic, act more enthusiastic than you did before. In the first chapter of how I raised myself from failure to success, is Frank Beck, he was a professional baseball player, and he got shipped down to the minors because he lollygagged around the field. When he, when he finally got good counsel, says, act as if you were excited to be on this practice field. Start firing that ball. Run out everything. That raised his level of enthusiasm, and it also raised his level of play, and it raised the level of play of everyone on his team because he was so enthusiastic. Action, the feeling of enthusiasm follows the action. Mm. The action leads, and then the feeling proceeds. Mm. I, I want you to think about Imagine putting yourself right now, put a, put a sad look on your face, okay, if you can. Mm. Now, if you keep that sad look for any length of time, you're going to start feeling sadder. Now, put a happy look on your face. You put the happy look on your face for just a few moments. You start to feel better. Is that why Grandma said, fix your face? Fix your face. <laughs> I love Grandma Wisdom because it's right. Fix your face, boy. <clears throat> 1971 in the University of Stanford, the Zimbrano study. A lot of people know the Zimbrano study. It was about, they took these two, they took two groups of students and they ran an experiment on them. In the basement at Stanford University, they had one group of students to pretend that they were prisoners and one group of students to pretend that they were prison guards. Okay, you guys act as if you were prison guards. You guys act as if you're prisoners. And like just with that little bit of instruction, what happened was the guards, they started to lord over the people. They started treating people in a demeaning way. They started to humiliate the prisoners. The prisoners started to shrink and retreat. It got so bad, they had to stop the experiment after only six days. It was messing with them. You know, just by telling them, you're now a prison guard, now you're a prisoner, just by them acting that way, they took on the persona of it. Have you ever heard of um, actors in a movie that play um, love interest in the movie end up being a couple afterwards? Mm -hmm. Because they have to act like they're love, in love with that person. Sometimes they even have to do love scenes with them. Now, you do a, a love-making scene enough times with an actress, I was in a TV commercial when I was a teenager uh, on Teenage Pregnancy, and we did like 13, 14 takes of every scene. 
you know, <laughs> for a commercial. 13, 14 times you have to do a love scene in a movie? Come on, man. You like that woman. <laughs> act enthusiastic. Also, act as if, act the way a champion would act. Mm. A champion in your game. How would a champion stand? How would a champion enter the room? How would a champion sit? How would a champion perform at the company party? You know, do the things that the champions would do, and you will feel like a champion too. Amen? That's my third point. I'm moving along here. Amen. It's 916 with your points. Woo. Another simple thing you could do that's going to help you to get out of a sales stop and to raise yourself from failure to success in sales, and this is going to sound trite, but I promise you it's true. If you just walk a little bit faster than you normally walk. Walk a little bit faster, moves your body, and it creates endorphins. Endorphins are what your, a chemical response to your body to help you to feel better. If you walk a little bit faster than you normally... Now, I didn't say run everywhere you go. I'm saying walk a little bit faster than you normally walk, you will sell better. Also, if you speak a little bit louder than you normally talk, a little bit faster walk and a little bit faster talk, if you talk a little bit louder than you normally do, you, you, you emit confidence. You come across as more confident. Not much louder, because if you do much louder, that puts a strain in your voice, and you come across as inauthentic. But if you come across just a little bit louder, that you can maintain the integrity of your voice, and you sound much better, and you start to feel like a champion. That was my one, two, three, four point. Mm, 917. 917. Another thing you could do that will quickly raise yourself from failure to success in sales is to join Toastmasters. Mm -hmm. Join Toastmasters. Toastmasters is a public speaking and personal growth organization, and every city has a lot of clubs in it. It's impossible for me to imagine. If you have a work where you communicate to earn your living, and if you're selling yourself or you're selling your services, you're doing that through communication, Toastmasters will benefit you. It gives you a chance to practice your presentation. It gives you a chance to stand before an audience. And it gives you a chance to be evaluated. And it gives you a chance to evaluate other speakers. We got some likes out there. I don't know who sent them, but I appreciate them. The number one thing you can do to boost your own self-confidence is to speak in public. And Toastmasters gives you an opportunity to speak in public often. If you want to raise yourself from failure to success, this is another thing that you must do. Join a Toastmasters club. Well, if you're here in Charlotte. If you're here in Charlotte and you have availability during the day, I actually have a Toastmasters group to recommend for you. It's called ESP, Empowerment Speakerpreneurs. It's a weekly Toastmaster club that meets every Tuesday at 12 p.m. at La Madeline's that Restaurant in like North Lake. Um, every Tuesday from 12 to 1.15. ESP stands for Empowerment Speakerpreneurs. And that is a themed Toastmasters club. That's a club that focuses on entrepreneurs, authors, speakers, and those that aspire to be one of those. Entrepreneurs, authors, and speakers. It focuses on helping you to communicate better, lead better, and persuade better. That's the commercial for you. 919. Dang! <laughs> Dang! Uh, here's the other thing, too. What do you do for a living? I'm not going to cover everything. <laughs> Mm -mm. What do you do for a living? Do you have a great answer to that question? What do you do for a living? Well, I'm in the people business. Bad. Okay, I'm in the <laughs> Horrible. I'm doing this. Okay, don't give me that. Um, do I have time? You know at 920 you're supposed to be... Um... Thank you. You know how. I'm not going to have time. Oh. Well... Miss Elizabeth says, awesome! What? I do is so that they can. Now, someone asks you what do you do for a living, I'm going to recommend you start your answer to that is, you know how, and then I want you to introduce into the conversation a problem that your service solves, and it needs to sound like an easy to agree upon problem. If it's for me, you know how there are so many professional people out here that have a service to sell, but a lot of them are only vague in how to sell it, or they're using antiquated selling methodologies that don't work today. And because of that, they earn nearly the money that they could. Introduce a problem that's easy to agree upon. 
If I had a landscaping company, you know how there are so many people that are so busy that when they're not working, the last thing they want to do is take care of their yards, but they want their yard to look good. That's an easy to agree upon problem, right? Then transition them to saying, well, what I do is, now you introduce yourself as a solution. Think of yourself as a solution to a problem and introduce yourself as a solution to the problem. Well, what I do is I solve that problem that you just agreed upon with my services. Is what you're trying to convey. And then the most important thing is the ending of your story, which is what most people don't do at all, but that's where all of your, that's where your money is, the end of the story. You do all that cool stuff you do so that they can what? So that they can earn more money, so that they can have a handsome home, so that they can feel better, so they can save money, so they can grow, so they can do this, so they can whatever. You do whatever you do so that they can, and remember to tell them. Now, my next point was, is to tell your story four times a day. This here is your story. If you will figure out a way to tell your story four times a day to someone new, you cannot fail in selling your services. Tell your story. How can you do that to four people new? Your job is to become now interested in other people. The more interest you get in other people, the more opportunities you will have to tell your story. How did you get into the business you're in? What do you like about what you do? Wow, that's fascinating. You learn about other people, which gives you the opportunity to, for them to ask you, well, what do you do? And tell your story. How am I doing on time? You're doing awesome. It's 922. Thank you for the conversations. Oh. We have 25 comments. <clears throat> and lots and lots and lots of likes. Please feel free to continue to share at any point, and the Real broadcast quick. will be available online after I'm not as well. I'm cover everything I wanted to cover. That's One okay. more thing I wanted to tell you, if you want to raise yourself from failure to success, and listen to me, men especially, start dry cleaning your clothes and upgrade your shoes. I said men especially because men seem to have more clothes that require dry cleaning. Stop laundering your clothes. Dry clean your clothes and upgrade your shoes. That helps tremendously. You know, uh, my sister has an expression, um, anything but the shoes. That means don't wear, any, I mean, you can wear anything cheap you want, but you can't wear cheap shoes. Okay, anything but the shoes. So just that little bit right there. Now, I asked my wife to remind me to tell you guys a secret. And this is going to rock you. This is going to rock you. Here's a secret that's going to greatly improve your selling. How much time is it? What's it? <clears throat> it is 9.23. People are drawn to and prone to move towards immediate satisfaction. Immediate satisfaction. People prefer immediate satisfaction. What about what you have or what about what you offer can you help them to see an immediate satisfaction? benefit. People, that is revolutionary. If you understand, let's say for example I sold financial services. I don't. And the real beauty of my product is over time it can grow a family's nest egg. Okay? That's true. But what do they gain right away? What do they gain as soon as they money exchanges hands? What do they gain? Put some thought to what is the immediate satisfaction. If you could th now tell them the long-term benefits, of course, uh, of hiring a personal trainer, the long-term benefits is you get the body that you've always wanted much faster than you would on your own, and you get to maintain it much better than you could on your own. That's the benefits, but the immediate benefit of hiring a trainer is not necessarily your body don't change immediately, but you do immediately get help. Now you have help on this process. Now you're not alone anymore. Hiring a coach, immediate benefit is you're doing it with some help instead of doing it on your own. own. But you, the professional, have to convey what's the immediate a benefit. Immediate benefit. People, Ms. yes ma'am. Ms. Elizabeth says travel today. And Mark says instant benefits. Thank you, Mark. I didn't get to type that. People are drawn to, drawn to, and move towards... Immediate satisfaction. satisfaction. I can't get satis. Spelling satis is no word. Satisfaction. Spelling don't count. Spelling don't count. I can't get Ooh. no satisfaction. And I try. 
and I try, and I try, and I try. I can't get no. What time is it? Set is 925. All right, Fat Sean. Good, good. People think about what is the immediate satisfaction. Now, I do this every Monday night. Every Monday night, I do these 30 minutes. Okay? And I'm going to keep going with them. But I still have three or four more points I didn't get a chance to make on these 30 minutes. When this session is over, I have a private Facebook group available to you where I deep dive into these things. I deep dive in my private group and I'm gonna offer you that invitation. I charge for my private group. Now my private group, we do, um, we do one live session a week and I also put a lot of my videos in there. I put my writings in there and it's an opportunity for us to exchange information. You can ask me questions there. We can talk it out. It's a little bit more relaxed than it is in this blazing fast 30 minutes. But my private Facebook group where you get access to a professional sales coach, now significantly less than what it would cost for you to hire me, but in the group format, I, you can do that for 25 bucks a month, $25 a month. If you want to take advantage of the private Facebook group and for just $25 a month, holler at me. My name is Brian Keith McNeil. You can reach out to my wife, Lisa Santiago McNeil, and I will give you all the information you want. You're on Facebook now, reach out to me on my Facebook page, or you can um, call me directly. My number's right here. It's 919-345-4893. Now, if you choose to call me, we will do what I call a sales consultation. It'll take 10 to 15 minutes. 10 to 15 minutes. And within 10 to 15 minutes, I will be able to what? <laughs> Mark says, raise your fees. <laughs> well, this right here is something I'm doing as a group. This is not, Mark, I, I'm expensive enough. <laughs> I'll, I'll, if you want to know my rates and fees, Mark, give me a call. 919-345-4893. But I appreciate the comment. Mm -hmm. But for 25 bucks a month, you get my private Facebook group. It's, it's a very low cost. Anybody could do it. It's basically six, what is it? Uh, $6.25 a week. You get amazing stuff, okay? What time is it? It is 6 928. I'm sorry. 9 okay, 928. The program ends at 930. I am a professional Toastmaster. I'm a professional speaker as well. And I honor times. I asked you guys to join me for 30 minutes, and that's all I'm going to take. So if it, is there any more questions that I need to address or anything you want to say? Anybody has a comment with the last minute and a half that they want to share? Sandra Siler, she says, I love it. Again, Mark says, raise your fees. <laughs> Elizabeth Crawley Lutz says that with her travel company, you get immediate tax savings. Talk Mark about. says, instant benefits travel today from um, Elizabeth Mark, you had another post I didn't see. Oh, he said check out his podcast as well. And he posted the link in there. That's great. So that's awesome. Business tips 101.com slash podcast. That's great. And we definitely want to celebrate entrepreneurs and those that are building and growing their businesses. It is 928. If there's any so other comments, go ahead and put them out go. there. No, it's still, 929. <laughs> I just turned 929. I am going to raise these rates. Mark. Not, not yet. That's your group. That's your group. That's that's for those. Uh, see, remember that we are for the prepreneur as well as that's the entrepreneur. Right, that's right, my baby. So for those entry level, those entrepreneurs that are still trying to create their exit strategy from the job, the just over broke. We want to give them the opportunity to Say do it. so. So twenty five dollars is accessible to everyone. Sandra, right away, raise her hand. She says she wants to be added to the Let's group. Do it. Awesome. Mark says, dance it out. We're gonna dance <laughs> it out. My music on. I got your music, baby. <laughs> I got your mu whoa! I got your music, baby. I am co-producing, and I'm already setting up for the next call. So yep. I'm trying to get these things done. But thank done. you guys all for honoring me with your presence. Absolutely. I'll see you back here next Monday night, unless you're in my group. That's right. And uh, Sandra, reach out to Brian on Facebook if you will. I'll have him uh, click you if or if you would just inbox him, he'll respond right back to you. And we are out of here. James. Gaining. This is MC Hammer, Gaining Momentum, one of my theme songs. <laughs>